our decision that despite several psychotic episodes and some manic depressive tendencies, the congressman should stay in politics, but avoid re-election after his sex change operation. I'll be out of your way in a second. Hey, pal. I'm no broom jockey, okay? What are you doing in here? Look, Sigmund, I have the highest regard for your profession, but I had to make sure nobody saw me come in here. You'll have to make an appointment with my secretary. Okay, Sam, this was a bad idea. I'll just go home and take out my troubles on my wife. That always makes me feel better. Uh, I think I could spare you half an hour. <laughs> Real leather. What a racket. Now, what may I do for you, Mr... Mr... Uh, uh, Pascal. Uh, Eddie Pascal. Well, I guess the reason I'm here is that, well, over all the years, when anything would go wrong, I'd always blame somebody else. And lately, I've been thinking that maybe it's me. Oh, why do you think that? Hey, you're getting a little personal, aren't you? <laughs> Mr. Pascal, if we're going to get anywhere, you're going to have to open up a little. All right, all right. Well, in all modesty, I'd have to say that I'm an example to the youth of America. <laughs> Handsome. Anybody got a comb? <laughs> Intelligent. <laughs> a pillar of the community. Anybody has a problem, they come to me because they know that I'm always there to lend a helping hand. I got a problem with this guy. An egg in his house and stuff wouldn't be enough. You know where I can get a good hit man? Am I hearing right? Those words from a descendant of Ward Cleaver? I know, Mr. Haskell. I guess I'm just not thinking straight. Yeah, I'll say. Why use a third party? Where's the satisfaction in that? Do the job yourself. It's the American way. You can challenge him to a fight? Are you kidding? You sneak up behind a creep and you hit him with everything you got. That wouldn't be fair. What, are you bucking for a Nobel Peace Prize or something? Come on, loosen up. Why don't you tell Big Daddy your problem? Well, I invited one girl to a dance, and now I've got a better offer. Well, is that all? Simple. You just play a little game we operators call Ditching the Dodo. Ditching the Dodo? Sure. You unload the crow and latch onto the dove. Well, we snuck out to the carnival and Kelly won a boat. Would you be referring to that exquisite sailboat they were raffling off? Uh-huh. And if our parents find out, they'll know we were there and we weren't supposed to be. Ah. What to do? What to do? I think I have your answer for you. I'll take the tub off your tainted hands and uh, we'll just keep it our little secret. <sighs> the history test is going to be on World War I. So all we got to do is write down all the dates and the battles and the names of the big shots on a paper towel. Well, I'm not in a mess as soon as I find the book. They'll send a guy around. And you know what he's going to do if you don't have that book? <laughs> Throw you right in jail. <laughs> They'll just toss your old man in the clink. Do you look at that? He get more turkey at the rescue mission. What a dime. At home about now, all you can smell is the rolls cooking. Pretty soon, Grandma will bring out the turkey. And Mr. Rutherford will crack everybody up with that funny toast. Over the lips and through the gong. Hey, you know what I'm doing? I'm playing the world's saddest song on the world's smallest violin. <laughs> if that's the way you feel, quit boring me and go on home. If my dad found out he was right this time, I'd never hear the end of it. Maybe not, Squirt. You know the old beaver, he may not be Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> He's got a big heart and a real forgiving nature. You think so? Still talking to me, isn't he? Gee, Eddie, thanks a lot. For what? I've got a new sport jacket I want to wear. No, you don't, Eddie. You did help me out. All right, so I helped you out. So I expect you to do something for me in return. Like, uh, robbing a bank or something. You know, Eddie, you're a real neat guy. Look, shrimp, you start slobbering over me and I'll slug you one. <laughs> See what I mean? You seem to have quite a high opinion of yourself. Oh, that's one thing I never had a problem with. Tell me a little about your childhood. 
it was wonderful. I grew up in the suburbia of Mayfield, enjoying the respect and admiration of my peers. I had an especially close relationship with my father. Hey, you better call your parents and tell them you're staying. What for? I don't have to check in with a warden every time I make a move. Edward Haskell. Ah, yes, I do recall him. Your son is a... Well, I mean, he's sort of a... You have the right boy. <laughs> I'm 13 years old and I've been to five different summer camps. You don't think my old man's spending that kind of money just so I can have a good time, do you? Uh, here's your gasoline card, Dad. Where'd you get this? Well, it was on your dresser, and I asked you if I could take it this morning when you were in the shower. Uh, perhaps you didn't hear me. <laughs> yes, perhaps I didn't. But Edward's so sensitive. Sensitive? He's about as sensitive as an armadillo. So, what Danny Polino did, you never took me to the circus or fishing. I was always afraid I'd throw you overboard. So instead, you decided to make my life a living hell. Well, thanks a lot. Hey, listen to yourselves. I can't believe that a father and son would talk to each other this way. He's never been a father to me. You know, I've never even seen the man naked. And what kind of son are you? I can't remember one time. One time when you ever made me proud of you. How could I? Nothing I ever did was good enough for you. If I got a B on a test, you'd be mad because it wasn't an A. When did you ever get a B on a test? <laughs> there. You happy, Freddy? Is this what you wanted? Please, if you two could just vault these few emotional hurdles. You don't get it, do you? The man never cared about me. People who care never say that they washed their hands of you. You never gave me a choice. When the police called me and told me what you did at the Denver Zoo. I never meant for anything to happen to that yak. <laughs> no, nothing was ever your fault. Everybody in the world was wrong except you. Not once did I ever see you take responsibility for your actions. That's not true. I married Gert, didn't I? I don't know what took me so long to wash my hands of you. Yeah, the old man's quite a guy. I sure hope when he buys the farm he doesn't stick me with all his unpaid bills. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Doc. Wait, please. I've never met anyone so, uh, you're so unique. I guess I do have a little more time. Go on, please. What's this gonna cost me? It's on the house. Great. Hey, can we order in some dinner? I'd like to perform a little word association test. Fire. Insurance. Love. Money. Money. Happiness. Pain. Poverty. Friendship. Cleavers. Pardon? Me. The Cleavers? Oh, the Cleavers. They're my best friends. Salt of the earth types. They love me. Oh! Get out of here. Lovely. He wants to be like Eddie Haskell. But he's your best friend, isn't he? Well, that's what he's always telling me. But he's kind of a creepy guy to have for a best friend. Hey, you gotta help. You're my best friend. I tell that to Lumpy, too, but I don't mean it. Eddie Haskell, you were a sneaky little boy. And somebody should have put you over there knee a long time ago. And you work out some sort of cut-rate deal so that you can pocket your share of the money and cheat your friends. And then on top of it, you, you push this clown's lights out and you drag me into it. What kind of an idiot are you, anyway? Hey, what am I, on trial here? <laughs> Counselor, I must point out, like it or not, you are here to defend Mr. Haskell. Your Honor, I have been defending him since I was five years old, and I am sick of it. I say we string him up. Yeah. I mean, why waste the taxpayer's done. money? Mrs. Cleaver, you've done something new to your hair. Not a thing. Oh, it looks very nice. Sometimes that kid gets under my skin. Sometimes I think he's a very nice boy. You know, Kip, sometimes I'd be working like crazy in my office, and Eddie would barge in, begging me to go down to the track or go have a beer. Ah, I got too much work to do, I'd say. Next thing I know, I'd be throwing back a cold one and yelling at horses. Sometimes I'd have to pull an all-nighter just to get the work done. But it was so much fun, it was always worth it. Well, at least if Wally goes off to school, he'll be away from Eddie's influence. Maybe we need Eddie Haskell. What? Well, if it weren't for Eddie, who could we blame Wally's faults on? All right, Eddie, this is it. 
Now, look, I don't know why I'm doing this, except that we go back too far to let your stupid pride destroy you, your family, and our friendship. Now, first thing in the morning, we're going to go down to the bank. We're going to refinance your loan so you can get back in the construction business where you belong. Okay. Really? You go along with that? Absolutely. Uh, I know it's not going to be easy to get back on my feet. I'm going to have to work hard and play by the rules. But I'll give it my best shot. You know, Eddie, this time I think you're really going to make it. Well, with friends like you behind me, how can I miss? <laughs> <laughs> what a pushover. <laughs> Woman. Kitchen. Sex. Money. Family. When you told me about yourself, you mentioned your father, but you didn't say much about your own family. Uh, I was just trying to hit the high points. <laughs> I just might want to get this one on tape. <laughs> Frederick, I'm very disappointed in you. You didn't do your chores today. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You didn't take out the garbage or pay my bills, and I told you to fire my secretary. She showed up at work again today. <laughs> hey, Frederick! You called, sir? You about through up there? Just about. You know, replacing that asbestos isn't quite the breeze you said it'd be. Come on, sir. <laughs> take a load off your dogs. You know, it's been a long time since you and I had a father-son talk. If that's what this is, I believe it'll be our first one, sir. Now, Freddie, you're my favorite son. I know I tell your brother that, but I don't mean it. Yes, I think he knows that. Oh, Mom, Dad, you remember Bomber, don't you? Oh, look, Wally. Uh, look who's here. It's Bomber Haskell. Hmm. Afternoon, sir. And Mrs. Cleaver, it's easy to see where your daughter gets her beauty. And fine bod. <laughs> Well, I must be on my way, so I'd like to sit on my tab. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll bill you. <laughs> yeah. Too bad about that little fever chick. Yeah, but we'll even things up on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a bus to catch, so take care, sir. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't tell you the good news. We finally saved up enough for that trip to Hawaii we've always dreamed about. Really? Yeah, two weeks. Condo on the beach, grass skirts, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure your mother will send you a postcard. Yeah. Comfy? Gert, you know I like my orange juice freshly squeezed. But honey, I squeezed it myself last night. Last night? Well, then it isn't fresh now, is it? <laughs> Hi, Gert. How are you? I know you're just gonna knock them dead tonight, honey bunch. Which brings us to an unpleasant subject. Listen, after tonight, there's gonna be a lot of groupies and, and plenty of temptation. I just want you to know that well, when I give into it, it's nothing personal. You've been a loyal and faithful wife, but uh, that doesn't sell albums. Oh, Eddie, you're such a kidder. Kurt, Kurt, this is very difficult. But uh, in a couple of years, I'm going to have to dump you. It's the natural course of a country star's career. Oh, you silly boy. I should just thank you. Oh, sure. Now you come around. <laughs> pa, Dad. Dad. You were clearly robbed. If I were you, I'd have the contest held again in another city where there's no prejudice held against you. It doesn't matter because we love you. Big deal. I'm loved by two people, one of whom has bird legs. Excuse me, George. I'll be the first to admit my father's not perfect. I mean, sure, he could be selfish, insincere, unctuous, petty. No help from the peanut gallery. Yeah, petty and many other things. But I'll tell you something, George. I've done some pretty stupid things in my young life. And after some of them, I'm sure my father wanted to wash his hands of me. When the chips are down, he's always come through. 
All my life, I've been trying to win your approval. All I ever heard was, Freddy, empty the trash. Freddy, wash my truck. Freddy, do my taxes. What did I ever get in return? I got a father who cares more about a car than he does his own son. You think I care more about a paragon of European engineering excellence than my own flesh and blood? In a nutshell. I'll show you. I love you more than Monday night football. I love you more than happy hour. I love you more than gin rummy. I love you more than ice cream. I love you more than prison movies. You're hurting me. Long showers. Three day weekends. Kickboxing. I love you more than anything else on this earth. You love me more than kickboxing? Thirty weeks. very proud of you, son. You've never said that to me before, sir. Well, there's been a couple of times I've wanted to. Look, I, I don't express myself well with words. Would it make you real uncomfortable if, if I... Hugged me? Something like that. That's everything. I've told you things that never told another human being. Well, I say that to Wally, too, but I don't really mean it. But this certainly has been a very emotional journey for me, too. So, what do you think? Well, this is just your first visit. These things take a great deal of time. Hey, come on, Doc. I gotta know. Is there something wrong with me or not? Give it to me straight. I think you are one of the most narcissistic, egocentric, paranoid, and anally fixated sociopaths I've ever encountered in all my years of psychiatry. Is that good or bad? It means you're a very sick man. Oh, yeah? Well, you may have all of these diplomas, but it's obvious you don't know beans about Edward Haskell. As a matter of fact, I think you're jealous of me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, Sachimo, if you think I'm gonna let you bask in my aura for an hour every week, you ought to have your head examined. And another thing. Found 75 cents on your couch. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep it. Tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, what legendary treasure and danger await Deborah Carr and Stuart Granger in King Solomon's Mines? Then at 9 o'clock, join host Tom Chapin for the world premiere of National Geographic Explorer. Now, NWA main event is next on the Superstation.